Okay, let me explain my title. By autonomous, I mean that we are trying to get rid of infrastructure as much as possible. By onboard, I mean we have built such a lean system that it can run on very small devices. A ledger must have a certain number of properties and my main interest is managing business processes between several parties. I have almost no interest in cryptocurrencies. Tokens, yes, but not cryptocurrencies. And the properties that ledger must be correct, it must be immutable, it must be complete, that means no transactions may be lost, and it must be checkable, easily checkable by others. And I'm using um, the paradigm chick to remember these processes, uh, these properties easily. Distributed ledger is an entirely different aspect. Let me look briefly at the basic design decisions of blockchains. The first one is proof of work, proof of stake, proof of authority, and so on. These design decisions are used to achieve immutability, to make the booking process very expensive, but they can also be an environmental disaster. Blockchains usually have rather large data, volume, data volumes, Miners are needed to manage the booking process and consensus between miners. I see these as basic design decisions of blockchain. Uh, the design decisions of C-chain are quite different. First one is replaced proof of work by proof of correctness and proof of signatures. By correctness, I will come to that in a moment, I mean essentially certified software. Blockchain we split up into many small blockchains. One of my favorite examples is if you look at the maintenance of cars on German roads. There are about 50 million cars in Germany. It does not make any sense for me to book all the maintenance work of these cars in a single blockchain. What we are doing book the maintenance of a car in one blockchain that belongs to the car. Miners are replaced by certified uh, software, we call it the chain management system or the chain manager, and consensus is a one-time static consensus, namely by the certification. Certification by just one certifying agency or whatever doesn't really make too much sense. So we are relying heavily on multi-certified hardware, software, and smart contracts. With those design decisions, the consequences are rather dramatic. The first one, very high performance. In the uh, streamless parking case that they are talking about 20 to 40 transactions per second, we are talking at least about uh, one order of magnitude higher. The uh, whole system has become extremely simple. It is perfectly scalable. Take the example of the 50 million um, seat chains for every car. If you have a performance problem there, you just split up into 10 million seat chains and you can manage them completely separately. Simple infrastructure, I'll show that in a minute, very low cost and a very wide range of applications. In particular, what we are targeting are very high transaction rates. If you look at recording of data in heavy machinery and critical infrastructure, also in future cars, the data must be booked and the number of transactions that are necessary becomes very high. What we did is the resulting onboard C-chain system and that means our complete system runs on a single device, onboard C-chain, presently we are using a Raspberry Pi and on that device you have 
smart contracts, a data collector, a C-chain client, and the chain management system. Imagine this being an encapsulated, certified, and the essential message is this device fits out a blockchain. Any data coming out of that are already booked in a blockchain. And what you do with that blockchain from here on, that's an entirely different story. You can pump it to a data warehouse system, to a SCADA system, to a smartphone, etc. So that's the essential message. We produce blockchains in there. Now the, uh, the elementary interaction paradigm that's typical for blockchain activity, there is an agent U which generates transactions, signs transactions, uploads transactions. It identifies itself, of course, with its digital ID and so on. The transactions are booked in CM within CMS. Um, a chain owner can decide himself which CMS he wants to use for booking his transactions. And a transaction is directed towards a recipient V and second agent V. The uh, tasks of the CMS are surprisingly simple. What the uh, chain management system does, it checks the digital IDs of U and V. It checks the signature of the payload that must be signed by U, of course. <coughs> then it signs this transaction with its own private key and appends it to the proper transaction chain. This is a picture showing how we uh, split up a blockchain into many transaction chains. Up there is a typical picture of a blockchain with different types of transactions intermingled. This, these are separate transaction chains depending on the application that is running, depending on the uh, transaction type and so on. Uses of onboard C-chain, there are many, many uses. It's autonomous, complete onboard. It's a blockchain variant. It produces blockchains, only in a slightly different way. Um, one application which Jonas will show is e-charging. In that case, the blockchain is built and produced within the charging station. It can be built into cars for data collection. The data leaving the car are already in a blockchain. Very interesting critical infrastructure because of vulnerability. In critical infrastructure, by that I mean power, uh, power companies, water companies, and so on. Um, they would like to have the data absolutely secured without leaving the facility. And we do it by simply producing the, block, the blockchain within such a facility. Uh, preventive maintenance, autonomous cars and infrastructure. Okay, many, many applications. Automotive applications of cars, e-charging, car sharing, um, operational data, and so on, driving behavior. The goals you're trying to achieve, preventive maintenance, saving costs, of course, analysis of weak points, improve the product, avoiding accidents, damages, avoidable traffic accidents. It's surprising that if the data maintenance data, operational data, etc., would have been booked properly and if these data would have been analyzed properly to recognize the situations. Such accidents are avoidable with very tight surveillance of what is happening in these machines. Early recognition of problems, early warnings and alarms. Here are more applications of C-Chain. I um, a hot topic is paper use for robots. Uh, robot people tell me in the future robots will not be sold, they will also not be leased, but uh, robot companies will say they'll um, sell work. If 
a robot does this. This is work. Picking up something, pulling it over here, screwing it on, on and work is simply defined as power times the uh, the length of the transportation way. And if you imagine a digital factory in which many robots are doing what I just did with my water glass, you see immediately there are transactions at a rate of definitely above 500 per second. If all robots in this factory are doing this and booking this in a blockchain is an interesting um, task. And we know we they can do that. We are actually doing that. Now, our ultimate goal, so to speak, is the following. At the moment, we have a complete seed chain system running on a Raspberry Pi or comparable devices like an edge node. We are presently working on the problem of moving the uh, security critical parts, components of seed chain down to the microcontroller level. This is a Raspberry Pi. In, in between would be edge nodes. And this is what we're doing right now. Uh, the uh, essential idea there is to have a blockchain system running within the charging station. <coughs> and communication is between the driver, present is the driver, in the future, the car itself that has an agent or a smart contract built in. But the essential point is C-Chain is built into this device, into the uh, charging station, and there is no communication needed outside to produce the blockchain. The essential communication happens between those two. My observation is, I showed you how simple uh, the, uh, the, the chain manager is. That's uh, the lower thousand lines of code, of Kotlin code. Uh, the smart contracts we have worked with are typically 200 lines of Kotlin code, Java code, to 500 lines, and something like that is certifiable. It's not certifiable by automatic proof techniques, but it is certifiable by people.